This is my jewellery cabinet. At the moment it stands in our bedroom. It was a Christmas present from my mum a couple of years ago. She got it from QVC um, and I'll be putting the link down below. This is the freestanding version of the mirror cabinet. I think there's also a version that you can just hang up on your wall. As you see the cabinet has a little lock. This is really practical because when you move it about things won't just come tumbling out. And this is the interior of the cabinet. As you see it's really easy to organise. It just has so many ways that you can hang up your jewellery. Whether it's your earrings, your necklaces or your bracelets. And it's also really spacious inside. Actually as jewellery cabinets come it must be one of the most spacious ones out there. I just really like it. And it's kept my jewellery detangled and neatly organised for the last few years. This here is my earring collection. I've accumulated most of these over time. I have also lost quite a few. My hair just seems to have a will of its own, and often earrings will just get tangled up in it and then drop off. Does this happen to any of you? The cabinet has a really soft velvet backing, and the top compartment has little holes. I think this is actually meant for rings, but I don't have many of those. So I keep the ones that I do own right here in the first row. And then I keep my ear studs in the other rows. This one I got from my gran. This is a pair I inherited from my mum. I love their turquoise colour. They're not even that old fashioned. I recently went shopping at Accessorize and I bought a couple of earrings in a pack. These here are part of their new collection. So I'll try and find them online and put the link below. For those of you who fancy the same ones. I just love their blue shades. These guys are really cool. They are so cute and original, don't you think? These also used to belong to my mum. But most of the time I don't know what outfit to wear them with. My dangly earrings hang on a door. Here's another pair I got from my mum. They're probably not to everybody's taste, and I only wear them to certain occasions, but I like their gypsy vibe. I got this pair in Barcelona five years ago. I actually bought them at a Gaudi exhibition. They have a really unusual but pretty colour, don't you think so? If you have really long earrings, you can just pop them behind the baton like so, and that will stop them getting tangled up. These are some of my favourite earrings. I do love a good pair of pearls. They stand out really nicely against my hair colour. And they're just so dainty and cute. I used to wear these a lot. I'm actually surprised I didn't lose one or both. These are a pair my gran gave me for Christmas. I must say I'm really into dainty earrings and apparently pearls too. These were a present from my little sis. They are really sparkly and I love their colour. My stepdad brought these back for me from Chile. They're pretty special, I've not seen many like this. Did you notice the tiny butterflies at the end? Last but by all means not least are these blue earrings. They're actually clip-ons. My mum bought these on a market in Paris where I used to live. Now to the part that you probably all wanted to see. These are my necklaces. There are two places in the cabinet to hang them up. I divvy mine up by the ones that I wear quite frequently and the ones that I don't. This is a necklace I bought recently at Accessories, at the same time as the pack of earrings. It has a bit of a tribal flair to it and it definitely stands out. I actually wore it for the first time today. This necklace is really special. I bought it from a tribe in Kenya when we went there a couple of years ago. The colour of the blue pearls really pops. 
And I actually wear this necklace pretty frequently. Another necklace I got at my recent accessorized haul. I guess I went a bit mad. It's a really long pendant necklace with a pretty blue stone in the middle. If you have long necklaces like this one, there's this velvet pouch at the bottom. So after hooking it up, you can just stick the rest of the necklace in the pouch, like so. As I said before, I'm a fan of dainty jewellery, and this is a silver necklace I inherited from my grand. The stone in the centre is actually real. Seems I have a lot of turquoise jewellery. I often like to wear several pendants at the same time. And this is a collection of my gold necklaces. I just hang them up all together. This golden heart is another pendant I inherited from my gran. And another turquoise stone. Seems there's a theme. This golden rose was a gift from my friend. And it used to be one of my favourites. Did I mention that I love pearls? I have two fake pearl necklaces, and some people might find them tacky, but until I get the real deal, I'll have to make do. Not so with this necklace though. I've had this one for ages, and I keep falling in and out of love with it. This was also a present from my gran, and it can look quite fancy with the right outfit. This is another necklace I wear regularly. It's been a while, but I think I also bought it at Accessorize. The butterflies make it really girly and summery. This necklace was a present from an old friend. And before I got this cabinet, the three strands always got tangled up. I keep the necklaces I don't wear that often in the bottom compartment of the door. The layout is similar to the other compartment. There are hooks at the top and a pouch at the bottom. All of these are necklaces I don't generally wear. They're not really fashionable and they don't go with any of my outfits. But they all have memories attached to them and so I would never get rid of them. I also keep some of the bracelets I don't really wear down in the pouch. This one for example is from our holiday in Kenya. This is a necklace my dad brought back from one of his work trips. Those are shark teeth by the way. I do hope they found them on the beach. These are another two necklaces my dad brought back from his holidays. I believe he bought them in Chile. They are actually quite pretty and if I had the right outfit I would probably wear them with it. I do believe that those are real stones. I also have some pendant necklaces in here. This is one I've had since my teens. Definitely not fashionable at the moment, but who knows, maybe one day. This necklace is part of a set I got in Barcelona at the Gaudi Museum. I do love the bronze colour, and I do think that bronze is back in fashion, but I just don't seem to be able to wear this necklace with anything. Here are some of my dainty little necklaces. The dark blue one is another necklace we found in Kenya. Below the earring racks is a bar. This is where I hang my big bracelets. It keeps them neatly organized and I have an overview of all of them. Below the bar are a couple more hooks. If you wanted, you could hang up more necklaces, but they would have to be relatively short. So this is where I put my daintier bracelets. This is one of my favourites. As you probably know by now, I do love pearls. And this one is so dainty and feminine. The irregular sizes make it look a bit like freshwater pearls. But sadly they're fake. I've had this little charm bracelet for a long time. Bought it as a set with earrings and a necklace. But I generally wear the bracelet by itself. To be fair, I'm not keen on matching my jewellery. What do you know? Another bracelet with pearls. Funny that. Maybe I should have called my blog the turquoise pearl. I've had most of my jewellery for a long time. This is a bracelet a childhood friend gave to me. I love its painted bead and how it can be turned right around. Did any of you guys have this type of bracelet as a kid? They were really fashionable for a while, and everyone seemed to have a couple of them. I think they're called Buddhist prayer bracelets. Here's the bracelet of the set I was talking about earlier, the one from Barcelona. I don't wear the bracelet as often as the earrings, 
but I have worn it on many special occasions. This bracelet comes from Namibia. We visited one of the nomadic desert tribes and I bought this bracelet as a souvenir. It's completely handmade. I love this set of pearlescent gold bracelets. They go with almost anything and I just think that they're really elegant. Most of these are bracelets I've had since my childhood. These black silver ones are quite sophisticated. And this is the most precious piece of jewellery I own. It was a Christmas present from my boyfriend. He bought it in Paris and he really spoilt me that year. It was our first Christmas together at my parents and he bought a necklace for my mum. This part of the cabinet has compartmentalised little nuts. And this is where I keep some of my chunkier bracelets, such as this gold and pink one, which I bought a couple of years ago at Primark. It's really pretty, and it will fill up your wrist, but it often gets in my way when I'm drawing on the computer. So to keep them from slipping about, I've tied the bangles together. I'm odd that way. I bought this turquoise set at the same time as the pink one. I also got it at Primark, and because I only had one spare chain, and I hate them slipping about. I never removed the plastic tie. I should probably do that right now. I also keep my watches in these little nukes. This is a fake German imitate of the ice watch. For those of you who are German, have visited Germany or live there, You'll know the shop, it's called Chibo, and they sell quite a lot of good stuff. I would call this my everyday watch, except that I don't really wear them. This is my oldest watch. It was a present from my gran. It has a beautiful colour, and it's not too big on your wrist. I actually really like this one, but again, I don't wear it nearly often enough. And finally, an elegant little watch. We found it in Paris, and both my mum and I immediately fell in love, so she got the black one and I got the white one. I really love the original shape, but it makes reading the time a little difficult. I hope you enjoyed watching my first YouTube video, and I hope that it was helpful or at least interesting to some of you. If you did enjoy it, you might want to think about subscribing or visiting my blog, dandelionblue.co.uk. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.